Hey guys, so I recently just got to take out a 2020 Norco Bigfoot VLT2 and I thought I'd share with you guys my thoughts, opinions, and the main question, is it worth your pennies? Let's talk about the specs first. Brakes. Uh, they come with SRAM guide trails. They're pretty good brakes-ish. It's all you really need when you're out in the snow. Uh, because you don't want something really touchy because you'll be locking up tires left and right and when you're already on the brink of traction you you don't want to chance it they're pretty actually pretty good brakes for this bike you'll never catch me saying that again <laughs> the drivetrain it comes with is sram's essex eagle group set 12 speed with a 32 ring on the front and 1150 in the rear. You have all the range you ever need. You can get up what you need, you can get down what you need. It does everything. You're not gonna run out of gears. It's pretty much, it's perfect, especially with the motor. It's all you need. It comes with a 100 millimeter Trans-X dropper post, which is really nice. And you wouldn't necessarily really want a bigger drop post or a shorter drop post. I think it's the perfect size because if you're pedaling along and your back tire sl slides out, you put a foot down and your foot goes like uh, a spike right through the snow, right to the bottom. And uh, you need to be able to drop that post really fast or your foot's going to the bottom and you're falling over. It's just the way it is. So the tires it comes with are the Tayrene Cake Eater tires, which are amazing. And this is what, if you don't already have them, this is what you need. This is the, the Maxxis Minion of the fat bike tires. They are studdable as well, so if you want to uh, get some studs off Amazon for pretty cheap, all you need is an hour, a lot of pain and suffering, and uh, you'll have them studded. They are tubeless already, and the rim, the rims are tubeless as well, uh, except you'll have to do your own rim strip and the handling. Um, it's a fat bike. It's not going to handle like your modern trail bike. It's those tires are super heavy. You've got lots of uh, inertia in those tires. Comes with two bottle cages, which I guess could be a spec, but I think that's definitely a pro. The bike store only comes with bottle cages nowadays. Uh, two is where it's at, so if they don't freeze when you're out fat biking, it's great. Bike does not come with suspension, which some people may look as a downfall, but you have the fat tires, which you can air down to about 5 psi in the snow. There's, there's one time I forgot I wasn't on my trail bike, jumped off a rock and thought I broke my neck, but that's just me alerting. I was only in about three inches of snow and probably should have expected it. Uh, however, you can spend $1,400 more and get the Bigfoot VLT1, which comes with nicer components and a suspension fork, so you won't do what I did. It comes with Three levels assist, which are, well, off, which is you're just pedaling normally, eco, there's a little bit of assist, trail, which is kind of in the middle, and boost, which is, it helps you a lot, and you could just fly up uh, whatever you want. And also it has a walk assist, which is really nice, because you will slide out on this thing when you're in the snow. You can press the walk assist, and it'll get that <laughs> little bit of a piggy of a bike up that hill without you... Uh, struggling too too much it comes with the e7000 motor which is pretty silent battery size is 500 watt hours which is plenty enough to get you up and down the mountain a few times if you want to depending on your assist level however it's not easily removed you have to drop the motor for that so and there is no way to take the battery out so you have to charge it on the bike which is kind of uh Unfortunate. I would like to see maybe uh, the integration with uh, a secondary battery or removal of the battery. Uh, let's talk about the display next. The display, it does not flicker like that. It's just uh, the video. It's Bluetooth compatible. So, uh, it can say uh, a big bunch of functions, including time, assist mode, uh, charge level, speed, gear indicator, if you have DI2 hooked up, distance, total mileage, riding time, estimated range, take that with a grain of salt cadence and error messages speaking of error messages i will show you something that's not great about the shimano so when you turn on the bike if you have your foot on the cranks it'll throw a code which is this and it won't let you assist which is kind of a pain in the butt so what you have to do 
is turn off the bike again and make sure you're not touching anything so it can do a full calibration and make sure all the sensors are working correctly. The big question, should you buy it? Yes, I'd say go for it. Uh, you, you just can't ride any other way. A Met Nor mountain bike's not going to cut it. Got a great price point at four to six hundred dollars Canadian. Good name brand com components. On more cross country style uh, riding, it's a bit of a dog. Maybe I'm just not used to the heavy handling of it. Uh, but I had the most fun uh, in the steeps. I like more technical stuff. Your back tire is sliding all over the place and your front tire is sliding all over the place because it's steep and off camber. That was insane. That was the most fun I had this. It can do the cross country stuff. But if uh, you were one of those guys who just flies up and lives for the downhill, it's it's sweet, man. It's sweet. It's the way to go. Uh, thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one.